There are a certain number of human beings that we will never get along with. I learned that. Sorry for the strange story out of the blue. My name is Mary. I hope you can bear with me for a moment. I am married to a man named Ted. Ted is a busy man with a busy job and is working alone in the suburbs of Tokyo. I am waiting for Ted to return and I live in the house we both purchased together. However, recently Katie, my mother-in-law, has been coming to that house frequently. Whenever I see it, it's too good a house for you. Katie always tells me that. Actually, our house is quite close to Katie's house. She told me that she would not allow me to marry unless I lived near her house, so I had no choice but to do so. I built a house near his parents' house, and sure enough, she started coming to our house frequently. Actually, my Kate got married the other day, and she wants a house. If you're the only one living here, will you please vacate this house? She started to say outrageous things. This house was purchased by Ted and I, and now suddenly we are being asked to vacate it. Ted is working alone anyway. Then why not? There is no good reason. If this house is lost, Ted will have no home to return to. I adamantly continued to refuse Katie's offer. Then she brought my sister-in-law, Kate, later in the day. Wow, this is a nice house. Certainly just the right house for my new home. Kate has been licking her way through the house. I honestly don't feel good about having people look all over my house. I love this house. Now vacate the premises. Even Kate started saying such things. Naturally, I decline. You dare to defy me? Sassy bitch. When she said that, Kate slapped me against me. What the hell are you doing? Even when I said so, Kate did not stop slapping me. I cowered and withstood Kate's attack. Katie laughs as I curl up and defend myself. <laughs> you should have been frightened like that. Don't get cocky with me right from the start. She didn't like it very much that I refused, but no matter how much she wanted, she didn't have to be so violent. Katie and Kate left for the day, but said they would come back later to have the house vacated. If I don't do this, they will really take over my house, I thought so. I contacted my husband, Ted, who is working alone. I explained the situation to Ted, and to his surprise, he too was contacted by Katie and her family. Katie was more protective of Kate than Ted, and from a young age, she was discriminated against by her brother and sister. Again, she told us that Katie is telling Ted to give her the house because she wants it. Ted looks quite depressed. I encouraged him. He said he still had some work to do that day, the conversation did not go very far. Then the next day, Katie and Kate arrived again. Today is the day I'm going to have you tell me you're giving me the house. Katie somehow came into the house with an umbrella. It's not even raining. I was wondering why an umbrella. Bash. She suddenly hit me with her umbrella. Apparently, they are saying that if I don't tell them that I will vacate the house today, I will destroy them with this. Now, say you will give her the house. Kate is going to be the master of this house. Kate also has an umbrella and has perished with Katie. I am desperately defending myself. However, it seems that both parties are swinging their umbrellas down with all their might, and protecting my head with my arms is not enough to prevent it. It was so badly violent, after a few minutes, I was stuck. 
I can't believe you didn't tell me you were going to vacate after all this. You're stubborn. Katie told me to my dismay, my body was in too much pain to begin with. I can't even speak properly. It is truly unforgivable to act as if they are saying they are not at fault after having done such a terrible thing. Eventually, Katie and Kate left that day as well. But now they went on to threaten that they might break bones, etc. If I don't, they may do something life-threatening to me. I was filled with fear at the thought of it. I immediately called Ted and told him about my day. Ted was concerned about my physical condition and suggested that we think seriously about the future. And afterwards, one strategy was proposed. I decided to take Ted's suggestion as I thought it was the only way to get out of this situation. During that operation, I basically tried not to be home during the hours when Katie and Kate would come over. By doing this, we were able to proceed without the operation being discovered. After starting the operation, it was two months later. My mother-in-law contacted me. I'm not going to see you anytime soon, so I've already forced Kate to live there. I'll throw your stuff outside on my own. Katie laughed as if to say, suck it up. Presumably Kate is already on her way home. But neither of them should know anything about the operation. I am sure Kate will be surprised when she gets home. While on the phone with Katie, I received a call from Kate. I put Katie on hold and Kate's call was answered. Who are you? I am the landlord. Who are you? It's my house. I heard a conversation about this. Kate seemed to realize that the phone was connected and started talking to me. Hey, Mary. What's going on? Why not you? There's a man in my house that I don't know. Kate seemed to be in a mild panic. I decided to explain to Kate what was going on. Actually, Kate, I sold that house a long time ago. I discussed it with Ted and decided to sell. When Kate heard this, she said, Way out! She shouted loudly. I hope she doesn't speak too loudly because it bothers the landlord. Why would you do that? I never heard a word about it being sold. That would have definitely stopped me if I had told them. And it's an operation because I didn't tell her. Ted was also quite upset with Katie and Kate's outburst. Most of what Ted had was taken by Kate. This time, we were almost robbed of our house, and as expected, we could not forgive them this time. Fortunately, since I bought the house with some assistance from my parents, I had very little loan left and was able to pay it off when I sold it. No kidding! I love this house! What are you going to do about it? Kate was quite angry. Everything was already discussed on the assumption that she would live in this house, so the apartment she was living in with her husband was to be cancelled. This means that if Kate cannot live in this house, she will lose her home and become homeless. Then why don't you just live in Katie's house? I asked that question without any question, but Kate got angry. My husband said, I definitely don't want to live with her. He even said he'd divorce me rather than live with Katie. Katie seems to be very much disliked if she has been told that much. Well, if she has such a bad character, it may be natural for people to dislike her. Kate has been pestering me endlessly to get that house at any cost. However, the sale has already been made, the residents have already moved in, so I don't want to be reckless. From the phone I could hear Joy, the resident, cursing. 
Apparently, she even spreads her luggage in front of the entrance, and the residents are quite annoyed. At this point, she may not be able to complain even if the police are called. I'll tell you what. Do something anyway. You're the one who sold the house. Kate didn't want to get angry and tried to get me and the resident to talk on the phone. That is certainly the person I sold my house to, but that doesn't mean I have anything to tell them. I think the least I can do, if I have anything to say, is to say that I am sorry that someone I know is inconveniencing you. At any rate, I declined Kate's offer. Then Kate starts yelling again. So I must tell you that if you shout in front of the house, it will be a nuisance to the residents. It may be useless to say anything more to the silly Kate who doesn't understand no matter how many times I tell her. I hung up the phone with Kate, thinking it was not worth talking about. Then, immediately, a ringtone rings. It appears to be from Katie who has been put on hold and cut off. I answer the incoming call. What on earth are you doing? Kate is angry. Do something about it. Suddenly, the anger. This person is also a staggeringly altruistic thinker. In the first place, it was just Katie's fault for forcing Kate to live there even though it was our house. Please don't make a fuss as if I did something wrong. I would have wanted to continue living in that house if the two of them hadn't made so much noise and done unnecessary things. Anyway, do something about it. Where are you right now? Come to think of it, I haven't told them yet. I'm at Ted's assignment house right now. What the hell? All of my belongings have already arrived and I have decided to live with Ted at his assignment. Ted is very busy and is frequently transferred, and we thought it might be better if we both transferred together instead of settling in one place. Fortunately or unfortunately, we don't even have children, and we can change where we live with some degree of freedom. However, that did not satisfy Katie. Come back now! I'm preaching to the choir, both of you! You're mocking me! Katie looks quite angry. But it is this way that I want to be angry. If Katie had not gone the extra mile, we would not have had to give up that house. Katie, come on! How much more trouble do you have to cause us? Since I was on the phone and had moved and was a distance away, I didn't think I had to worry about them fighting back. I decided to take the plunge and let out all the resentment I had been feeling. What do you think I've been through? Don't try to cause me any more trouble. Katie was screaming over the phone, probably very angry that I had defied her. It's such a scream that I don't even know what she is saying anymore. I worry that she might be too angry at any cost. I can't allow that. You talk to me like that. Ted is bad too. He's Kate's little brother, and he's rebelling against Kate. Apparently, Katie was also thinking of coming to the suburbs of Tokyo to get back at us. However, Katie does not know our address. Hey, where do you live? Tell me where it is. I was told such a thing, I am not stupid enough to be honest. Naturally, I refused. Then again Katie's exclamation. It was like a screaming machine every time I disobeyed it, and it was getting kind of funny in reverse. Enough! I am your mother-in-law. How can a wife disobey her mother-in-law? She brought up a very old value system. I mean, actually, there are plenty of ways to find out the address. Katie will never be able to reach the house, 
for the idea of checking it out. Just give me the address. You two are not going to get away with this. What the hell is that? Katie, who had been angry, suddenly made a funny noise. I wondered what on earth was going on. W, what are you going to do about it? It's your fault, isn't it? She cried out. When I asked what they were talking about, they told me that Kate had apparently been taken away by the police. It seems that she was forever persistently threatening Joy to leave the house, and Joy called the police when he couldn't take it anymore. Well, of course it will. She can't calmly assess the situation, and she truly believes that she can do something about it if she just struggles with it. It seems that she has inherited this from her mother. They will finally cool down when they are taken away by the police. My precious Kate! I won't allow it, you people! Here again, the blame shifting. No matter how you look at it, it was Kate's fault for making noise in front of someone else's house forever. To my dismay, Ted came home from work. When I told him I was on the phone with Katie, Ted took over the phone. Mother, all this time I've been. Lived in fear of you. But that's over now, I don't listen to you anymore. If you come to my house without my permission, I'm calling the police. Ted also seems to have grown out of this incident. I can't believe that he dared to go that far with Katie, who has been abusing him. Ted returned the call to me saying that I had said all I wanted to say. Katie on the phone screaming again. She is too unaccustomed to being hit back anyway. Don't you think for a minute that if you do something terrible, there is a possibility that they will fight back? Katie, just give it up already. Kate has been brought in, too, even if you do something to me, that would just be recrimination. Even so, Katie just kept getting angrier and angrier. It was like an animal that had forgotten the purpose of being angry. It is out of control. Um, Katie, can I hang up now? No more constructive conversation. I don't think there's anything I can do. Having said that, Katie does not listen to me at all. Don't speak for me. Mother-in-law is absolute. A wife who defies her mother-in-law shouldn't exist. If they are this messed up, I have an idea. Katie, I've said this many times. We have no intention of associating with you any longer. Don't contact me. I continued to make remarks that deliberately upset Katie's nerves. Naturally, when Katie heard this, she was furious, she cursed me. There was a tremendous amount of abuse, and if I had listened to it properly, it would have broken my heart. But it was my goal to make her say it. Katie, all the ranting you've been doing, I have it all recorded. I said, and Katie snapped out of her tirade and became impatient. You said, recorded? What the hell are you doing? It's Katie's fault for spouting off, isn't it? Slander is also a crime. If I let my lawyer hear this, I'm sure they'll be able to claim some sort of fee or fine. When I said this, Katie cried and apologized. I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit mad. Please, don't call a lawyer and the police. Hey! Katie was so insistent on apologizing that I nailed her to never get involved with me and Ted again, I decided to forgive her. Katie promised to do so and never called again. In fact, it was an outright lie that I was recording and it was a strategy to get Katie to back down. Since Katie does not even know how to look up an address, I was expecting her to fall for such a simple operation, and she did. 
Now there is finally peace in my and Ted's life. Kate was taken in by the police and then paid a fine to the resident. After losing their home, Kate and her husband moved in with Katie, but within a few days her husband told her he was divorcing her and Kate had to leave him. In addition, I heard that Kate was very abusive to her husband and had to pay a fine for insulting him. Katie and Kate both completely lost their money. They were once on each other's side, but now they hate each other. I am told that the house is in a constant state of acrimonious mode. Well, that's what they deserved. I hope they accept it and live with it. Ted then completed his assignment and returned to headquarters, but a few months later he was transferred back to a distant location. As he became busier and busier and was transferred more and more, we realized that it would be more convenient for him and me to be posted together without having to decide on a permanent place of residence. Nowadays, we are told by various people not only in his company but also in the places we have moved to that we are a couple of Mandarin ducks who go everywhere together. We did not give in to Katie and Kate, and we both overcame our difficulties together. My husband and I were sure that we would be able to go anywhere. We will continue to help each other as a couple.